Welcome to Numb Bills Fan Podcast number 190. I'm your host today, David Palermo, along with Mike Smith. You can follow him on Twitter at Fantasy Smitty. We're going to talk about me owing Mike a garbage plate. What's that mean? I owe him some kind of dinner because Nate Peterman is starting, and I swore up and down Josh Allen was because for the future, it's about Josh Allen. So we're going to dive into that, and most importantly, really more importantly, is Buffalo's going into Baltimore, play the Ravens. Do the Bills have a shot? I think they do. Any given Sunday, whatever you want to put in there, stay tuned. All right, so on the line we have Mike, all pissed off, fucking Mike. What's up, Mike? Hey, Dave. Are, you in, a, are you in a quiet fucking spot? Peterman, you, you Peterman fucking... Flipper over here, Mr. Jackass, draft day stealer. <laughs> David Palermo, fucking Peterman sucks, fucking sucks, we fucking sucks, bro, he fucking sucks. What the fuck, man? The dude fucking sucks. Uh, I'll draft uh, Nathan Peterman. Uh... Yeah, he sucks so bad you had to put him on your fantasy team, huh? Because that's what we do with people. We, we fucking suck, bro. You know, so, you know, I'm doing good, though, So that was, that was our third. So let's set the scene. That was our third draft together. Our first draft was our scam fucking dickbag dynasty league that I'm back in, and I picked this guy who's fucking injured towards ACL because I'm looking at fantasy football focus shit. Whoa, and, whoa, whoa, or pro whoa, 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 No, 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 no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me set the scene here. That was here. a different draft. Yeah, now yeah, you're no, you're no, mixing no, the no. draft. That's your draft. You drafted a guy that had a torn ACL, okay? My draft, you drafted Malcolm Mitchell, and I tried to I tried to get you not to draft him. I said when you, you said, Malcolm Mitchell, is he still available? I go, David, why? Do you know something I don't know? And you're, I go, he's available. You're like, yeah, I want him. I go, last I heard after you drafted him, he was back. As you're walking to the board, sticking Pop the fucking him, sticker baby. on the board. Put yeah, it on that's the what board. you fucking did, dude. Hey, you hey fucking we did a vote at the draft, and guess what the league member it. said? You walked that's to the board and laughed about it. No, dude. Hell yeah, I laughed about it. No, no, okay? no. And you know what the worst part is? Is the round before the dude Kevin went or uh, Andy went through the same shit with his wife on a fucking pick for Deshaun Jackson or something where something got screwed up, and you guys all voted it. Oh, yeah, we'll take care of it. But no, my no, fucking turn, you, just, you compl- just chuckle. And I'm was, like, I got two more drafts with this motherfucker. That was a different scenario because he couldn't leave the draft without a actual team. So he had to remove a pick because he didn't have a kicker in a defense yet. So he wasn't going to be able to finish the draft with a kicker. In well, defense. that so, sucks. Well, that sucks. Okay. That's the same fucking problem you what? ran into it's in the 16 team big. league. All right. Well, no, fucking folds fucked me last night. All these goddamn no, no, drop Mike, picks Mike, and shit. You gotta slow down. You can't talk over me, and I can't talk over you. So back yeah. the fuck up. We gotta settle this. Ready? So dynasty league. You fuck me walking up to the board with the pick, chuckling. After it's not my problem that they didn't think to draft the kicker or the defense, and they took a risk on something because they they weren't clarified on how many rounds. Not my fucking problem. Uh, my, my hold, I, 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 pick yeah. two. Or my my own fantasy draft for the podcast here, where you're commish because they're sweet. Yeah, I did pick another to ACL, so I guess you didn't stiff me on that one. But when we're at the table in the 16 team draft, and you're talking about the Numb Bills fan draft to Tommy, and you're like, "Hey man, hook to hook," and Tommy's in the league for that one too, and your dynasty league, and I love Tommy, but you're telling him, "Hey, did you uh?" No, what kind of running back you need out there? And I'm like sweating bullets because I'm dropping McKinnon or whoever the fuck I picked up because I'm like, oh, shit, I can't believe he's there. high five myself. And I'm like, huh, this is weird. And I can't believe he's available. And you immediately call me, and I'm like, oh, I fucked up. Point being here is that, yo, you end up trying to tip off Tommy to take LeGarrette Blount because I'm fucking desperate for a running back here. And it's you like, are. that's a dick move right there. So then when and, it comes time for the 16 team draft and your dumb ass don't draft the fucking quarterback till later than even me, and, and it's like literally the second last round, yeah, I'm fucking take a Peterman. 
fuck you. I'm taking Peterman. Are you fucking serious? I'll even fucking start hey, Peterman over hey, Mitchell Trubisky. Hey, Watch hey. me. Peterman for the too. fucking win, baby. I'm fucking in. <laughs> Seriously, I'll fucking start him in the 16 team league. Took him in my last hey, round. Just hey, fuck guess you. What? I was definitely going to start him in the 16 team round because he's got a good matchup. No, it's this all week. you had, motherfucker. He's got a good matchup this week. That's why. Okay. Quarterbacks are a dime a dozen. Everybody knows that I can get a quarterback any day of the week. Okay. I know Nathan Peterman. Although on paper, people are thinking he doesn't have a good matchup, but without Jimmy Smith, that team is pedestrian at best. Dude, I've heard I've heard from people, and by people, I mean I put some bullshit on Twitter because I'll be real, I've been like chasing my ass as we're recording this at 10.04 a.m. Friday to get this out for afternoon and Saturday. It's like, I'll be working later tonight, and I'm doing this oddball shit with so many little jobs. And I don't have time to fucking sit there and research, so everything I'm getting is audio and Twitter articles and this and that. And I heard that the Ravens' depth, if I'm not mistaken, at corn, at defensive back really isn't bad. And that, like, I, I, I still... Mm, I, I don't know, man. Like, I don't have any confidence in how that's going to work out. You know what I mean? Like... Like I I don't know I I think the defensive backs are are kind of like you, you can coach them up you can scheme with them you know what I mean like look what Sean McDermott's done yeah I really got to give the dude credit with the defensive backs in Buffalo last season oh they now killed we're it. giving Sean McDermott credit uh, actually you're right huh? I should give Gil Bird credit because he's not there anymore <laughs> yeah I should give Gil Bird credit the coach the defensive backs coach that's not there anymore sorry about that um but no really. You gotta be a dick. I'll give Mick D credit where it's due. <laughs> but come on, man. I've given Rex Ryan credit where it's due. I've given fucking Chan the man credit where it's due. I give them their run. Make no mistake. Like, I just have a you problem. You can't trust this. You trust the process. Trust the process. Uh, Bro, if you want to drink the fucking Kool Aid of fucking everything, <laughs> then do it. I just always just been like, yeah, this seems like fucking bullshit to me, you know? And it's like. People just forget that it's been 10 years since people come in and say, it's fucking my way, and this is just how it works, and we know more than you just because. And it's like, I was just having this conversation uh, with this dude Jesse the other day, or yesterday. He's like, kind of pretty much telling me, like, I just have a problem with giving away players, you know, the equity of draft picks when you need holes filled, and just being like, well, we just know more than you. And it's like, you need fucking players, man. You need fucking players. Yeah, so I got a problem with trading away players. I, I, I look at, like, three players attached to Josh Allen so Josh Allen could sit on the bench and we don't get better. I remember Drew Bledsoe in an interview, Mike, about a year ago with, with John Murphy, maybe a year and a half ago, and he was talking about how the two years he was there, the draft didn't even help him in the first round. They, they grabbed McGahee and J.P. Lossman, and, and he said it, you know, years later, Drew Bledsoe was able to kind of talk honestly about it. I was like, you know, frankly, a backup quarterback? Like, how's that going to help us? We just came off of a great year. You know, like, how's that going to – like, they were really looking forward to the next season, and they just don't really support them. Do you know what I mean? And it's like I, I want to have confidence that the team in the offseason, like, I, I, dude, I'm just looking for the team to sell me on something, man. Like, that's it. Oh, this guy's great cuz. Okay, well – I'm sure these guys all have great stories, but like, you know, like that's why I, I'm really looking forward to like Chris Ivory, Jeremy Curley, and, and, and Andre Holmes. You know, that's why I did the last podcast, 189 on those three. You know, because they're NFL vets. They know what they got to do. We saw a lot of Zay Jones in camp. I'm looking forward to him bouncing back. You know what I mean? You don't get touted as a good receiver, you know, for no reason. So, Dave, I hear you. And uh, so, with the defensive backs, I don't mean to be all over the place, but like to your point on it, like you really think they're going to be pedestrian at best at defensive back, dude? Like they're going, they're like supposedly what? Weren't they like ranked top five in DBs? You know what I mean? Last year, Something. that's when Jimmy Smith plays. When your best defense, that would be like the equivalence for us. Tredavious White not playing 
tomorrow or Sunday. I looked at if they're top five, doesn't that mean more like if they're top five, more like you have I don't know how well their other cornerback rates, so I don't mean to sound like stupid here. Um, but to me, I, I look at it like Stefan Gilmer and Ronald Darby. Those two were awesome together, right? So if one of them dropped off, you still got one that's pretty fucking good. You know? So like Yeah, but then but then you still have the hole. You have you have a you have a a spot in your roster where the other team is saying we have a distinct advantage and we're going to go after this guy. We're going to fucking torch this guy. That's what uh Dable and them they're scheming, they're coming up with plans. They're going to move Kelvin Benjamin around. I hope they yeah. do. I hope they okay. do because every time I'm telling you, man, with new coaching staffs, we go into the season. You know what? This is what they're gonna do. They're gonna we're gonna assume like last season, right now at this point, look, dude, they're gonna run McCoy. We're gonna pick up on where we went with the run game, and all we gotta do is get this defense straightened out and keep throwing the ball downfield, and we'll be good. And we didn't see that last year, dude. So like, I get what you're saying, like what Dable should do. Don't mean to be tapping in the background, but like, I, I get what we should do. You know what I'm saying? As a Bills fan and what we want the coach to do. But until I see it happen, Mike, I'm not going to buy it. I think he's smart enough. I think he's smart enough because what I'm seeing with the players he copped is big fucking dudes. You know what I mean? At the tight end spot. You have a lot of big receivers. I talk about Andre Holmes. Don't fucking sleep on that dude. He had three receiving touchdowns last year. I think he led the team with receptions or receiving touchdowns. You know, Calvin Benjamin, he's been going really late in fantasy drafts. So good about that in uh podcast one ninety one after this for fantasy. Um with well, he, you. But he, he's moved up the de- he's moved up ADPs tremendously since I started drafting. Because I've been, you know, I've done so many drafts. I've been drafted from the beginning of preseason all the way to the day before kickoff. So um day of kickoff too to be honest with you. But um his ADP rose exponentially because he came into camp. He's healthy. He's leaner a little bit. Um, and he's got a rapport with Nathan Peterman. So he is definitely going to have a good year. Um, he's the number one passing um, target this year. I think he's going to get at least 120, 130 targets, possibly more. Who knows how well they want to use him. But um, he's going to get a good amount of the target shares. Zay Jones is the number two there. Um, I don't think so. No, he's not. Jeremy Curley. Well, he, it's, Dude, it's Jeremy no. Curley. Yo, it's Jeremy. I'm telling you, it's Jeremy Curley, man. Yeah, you also told me it was Josh Allen. Dude, story, no, so, I'm dead fucking serious, know, man. I... Zay Jones played so much, dude. Zay, I think Zay Jones is on the last straw with that staff, personally. Okay? And and I'm telling you, at camp last year, I thought he was solid. I kept going, who's this number 11? Jones, Jones. Oh, shit. That's the kid they drafted. You know? And, 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 and I'm telling you, like, man. Just like the Jeremy Curley, parallel, you give them one year, you bail on them because they had a not so good productive rookie year. Not so good, I mean, like one of the worst. What are you talking about, dude? One of the worst rookie it. seasons you could have is a, is a fucking receiver who's on no, the field as not. much There's as him. Rookies that literally don't play. So I said who's on the field as much those. as him, Mike. You got to listen, yeah. dude. It, as much as. For, yeah, okay. he, he had some drops. But some, I'm telling uh, you, he's uh, still all? going to be he's still going to be the number two option just because of his athletic. Bro, it's still. a new year, bud. Okay, yeah. it's a new year, and, and I can't wait to see it. Curly is not old be guy. The old old guy, dude. If you listen to the last podcast, which clearly you fucking didn't, I love dudes who got suspended for PEDs because that tells me they're fucking professionals and they take care of themselves. Okay. <laughs> Have taking care of yourself doing drugs what kind of t- nonsense is that that's the lack of professionalism that's literally doing something you're not supposed to do in preparation for something you're supposed to be prepared for if you're doing peds you're not preparing properly and what you're fucking to world do you live in homie like okay. you don't think these half this league is a fucking like some kind of hgh or whatever okay something slipped through the fucking cracks all right and that's it. And frankly, when you do the research on a lot of the shit, it's probably really not that bad for you. So it's like it's actually kind of like cutting edge science. And I think Roy's kind of have a bad rap. I mean, I'm saying this loosely. If anybody wants to hit me up, I will gladly find some fucking source material to refer you to. So it's like. I don't know, man, I, I, I think that. 
everything is so fucking backwards that I'm I'm glad. I mean, I don't know, man. The Bills seem to like. I mean, Trent Murphy didn't he have like a PED thing too? I'm not sure, but I'm just telling you, if if there's an order in the in the receiving game, it's as followed. You have honestly the number two option in the receiving game, target wise, at the end of the year. I can definitely see that being LaShawn McCoy. Um, so you're going to have Calvin Benjamin, LaShawn McCoy. Um, Zay Jones and Charles Clay are going to be relatively close. And then Curley's going to be a role player. Rod Streeter is going to be a role player. They're going to get targets, but they're not going to be heavily dude, targeted. Jeremy um, Curley is, a, I'm telling you, he's a number two. Ray Ray McLeod um, are also going to get a fair amount of receptions i mean they're they're going to get less than 50 a piece but they're going to be explosive down the field plays for them um so each one of them is going to have a defined role and curly is definitely not going to be the number dude two curly is the number fucking two mike i don't know how you don't see it seriously dude go back into the log man he got suspended on peds the last year he played was a colin kaepernick dude Okay, the dude averages like ten yards a fucking catch. He's he's not a bad football player, man. Like, he runs routes. You need route running, especially. I mean, like, I need you to picture this. Here's how I pictured it, right? Okay, football. The well, reason I'm I like on the official Buffalo Bills depth chart, and Zay Jones is clearly listed as number two here. So I'm not I buying mean, it. Not buying it. You're not buying anything. No, man, they didn't fucking start You gotta see it. You gotta see it, man. I'm not buying it unless you see it. And if I see it on Sunday, I'll buy it next week. I'm buying. I'm selling today. But if I see it on Sunday, I'll buy it next week. That's fucking right. That's okay. fucking right. So I'm just trying to I'm just trying to help you before you know you're you're buying today. You're gonna be selling tomorrow. I'm trying to help you just buy in before you have to sell. All right, for well, no I'll reason. bet another fucking garbage plate. Who's on the field first? Jeremy Curley in an offensive formation. Jeremy Curley or fucking Zay Jones? Who do you no, trust that, to be in the right spot? Zay Jones or Jeremy Curley? I trust that, Jeremy Curley. There's a reason the motherfucker not, didn't play, dude. See, you not, clearly not didn't listen to podcast number 189 yet and you come at me with this hot shit what is wrong with you we talked about those three players that you expect to have just monster roles i talked about we we texted back and forth and i i told you then before you even i made didn't the say podcast, monster role i said don't I sleep told on you then. dude it's okay. called yo what don't you see you can't people can't give brian dable credit for coming from the patriots and not take the motherfucking philosophy, which is get guys into space, get creative with play calling. Well, dude, Jeremy Curley doesn't have to light it up with fucking 70 receptions this year, dude. If he has a solid fucking 35 to 60 to 50, if the quarterback is halfway decent, which I think Peterman is, believe it or not, he gets rid of the ball so you can actually hopefully put a formidable offense together. If Tom Brady gets rid of the ball in like the fastest ever, and their offensive line were like, holy fuck, what are they going to do? And the Bills can hopefully adopt that philosophy through Brian Dable somehow, how they did it. Dude, Jeremy Curley's going to have those little spot duty passes and catches. Like, where I, I'm just thinking, like, how'd they use Wes Welker? Why wouldn't Jeremy Curley master that role? Okay? You got these big dudes who are going to get out down the field. It's almost like I said on Podcast 189, almost as if, like, when you think about the way the Patriots run shit, it's almost like they just keep evolving the screen game. But more in front of the offensive line. They get creative. Like, all right, dude, run this route this way because the defensive backs are going to run into you. All right, well, check And this. then run the drag Since underneath it. Wes Welker as an example. Jeremy Curley is not Wes Welker in talent, okay? Jeremy dude, Curley's been on five teams for a reason, Dave. I mean, there's I'm talking types about of, the role they play, dude. Of, you can't go literally. I'm talking about X's and O's. Like, like the role that that dude's going to play is the same though. role. He's, not, he's, he's a not route runner. He's, he's a route still, runner fucking not huge, he, dude. He probably will get 60 targets this year. Okay? 60? 60. 60? 60. 60. What Maybe, makes you trust? It, what makes you trust that the Bills signed this dude, right? And Jeremy Curley, okay? If he wasn't that good... They could cut him, and he's forty. Only he only cost literally forty five thousand dead cap. Okay, and they cut Corey Coleman, who's like two point something million this year on fucking dead cap, 
and a seventh round pick, which is just a seventh round pick. I get it. But that's equity for like a player you might want to keep. So, no, 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 okay, no. anyways. So, like, yeah, you package it up into another pick, Mike. Because, oh, I guess it's just a seventh. Well, you don't have, oh, I guess it's just a seventh anymore. So, what I'm saying is, is this dude is so cheap, they could have gladly fucking cut him. All right? He didn't see that much time in preseason, dude. Zay Jones was on the field all the time. Why? Why? Because he's got to catch the fuck up. Talented. No, no. If he was that talented, they wouldn't fucking play him, Mike. Chris Ivory barely any, played. You, you just said <laughs> if he was, if he wasn't, you just said if he was talented, they wouldn't play him. What, what kind of logic is that? You don't want, you don't say, want him to get hurt. It's fucking preseason. No, well, he's also young still, so you still let your young players play. You know what I mean? You're bringing, they're still bringing up. The Zay speed. Jones like, is nowhere near. Zay Jones three is years to get up to speed. Okay? Zay Jones is so, not better than Jeremy Curley. I will fucking bet you a hundred dollars. Jeremy Curley is a way more productive season than fucking. Like literally right now, I will bet you a hundred dollars. Jeremy Curley has a more productive season than fucking Zay Jones, right here. Uh, what is the basis of production? Fucking barring injuries, okay. Basis of production is who has more receptions at the end of the year. Okay, so you're going reception based only. I'm just what saying if, overall fucking stats, dude. Who like? All right, well, dude has okay, like. It'll, it'll be clear and decisive. So I'll take your wager, Dave. Okay. Okay. Clearly, and, dude. Uh, a garbage play and a hundred bucks. You're a good guy. <laughs> you're a good guy, Dave. Oh, <laughs> uh, Buffalo Bill per BuffaloBills.com. Fucking, you know, say it's not even Buffalo Bills. I'm telling you, man, the Bills are stashing my secret weapon, Jeremy Curley. I watched them practice. I seen what they did in the preseason. I can see who the fuck's on the field, Dave, and I know what the hell they want to do based on the talent set. Yeah, right. You know what they want to do? They don't even know what solid five fucking offensive linemen they want to start. And you're telling me you can tell me what receiver is going to start? like. It's not like you can replace two or three offensive hold on, linemen. Hold on. And be like, Let's this go. Is what we're gonna do? Hold on. Here, here's an idea. Let's go with the fucking vet and Jer. Let's not go with the vet and Jeremy Curley, okay? And go with like one of the worst rookie receivers fucking ever in history of the NFL. Who the fuck do you think they're gonna go with, dude? Dave. That's the two options you got. Tell me right Dave. out the bat. Answer that question right now, Mike. Who the fuck would you go with, Jeremy Curley? You could have made that very argument with A.J. McCarron and Nathan Peterman a month ago. Okay, bro? Guess who they went with? They went with the guy in his second year who had a terrible start to his career, and bam, game one starter. They got a wide receiver who they saw lost some confidence after he dropped a couple of passes. They could have won a game if he came down with the one ball, yada, yada, yada. They saw someone who, who, you know, lost a little confidence, but you know what? He kept working. He went through some off the field issues um, as we all know, but he came back, he got back into it and they're ready to turn the corner with him as well. Okay. They're all about second chances in Buffalo. Okay? Where's the I want? Where are you getting this Buffalo Kool Aid? <laughs> like, where there's no Kool Aid. It doesn't matter whether you're drinking the Kool Aid or not. They're still gonna do what they're selling. Okay, they're still gonna do what they're selling, babe. And that's what they're selling. You, you might as well buy. It, okay, that's what they're gonna do. They get it to Zay Jones. Okay, they're gonna get it to Calvin Benjamin. They're gonna get it to Charles Clay. Okay, and every now and then. Curly is going to be in the game. All okay. right. All right. All right. All right. So, like, so look at, follow me, follow me, follow me. So, his last year, not really that great in San Francisco. Like, so before he got suspended, Jeremy Curly had eight, had eight games that he played 27 targets, 22 receptions. Okay. That's not a lot. I understand. Okay. But you also had to understand. Look at the competition level the Bills brought in at receiver. Absolutely fucking nothing. This dude has been in the league for this long. Now, the year prior, San Francisco, I believe that was your Kaepernick, 115 targets, 64 receptions, 664 yards. Not a good number. But a yard per reception was 10 yards, which is not really 
Like about the league average. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say here is I think Mike, when I when I really look at this offense and I want to dive back into Baltimore because this is my overall point, is I think everything and people and a lot of people listening will be like, Yeah, no shit, dude. But a lot of it really comes down to is if like me and you are playing a game of, of Madden, right? I want to put it, and people are fucking like Eric Turner and cover one's going to puke when he hears this because he hates this man and talk thing. And he's like, but I put it in layman's terms because it's how I relate to it. Where it's like, if you and I did like man and ultimate team, we would look at our roster, you would zoom back out, or if we had a fantasy draft or something when we drafted a team, we would, we'd zoom back out and we'd be like, okay, here's the pieces. This is what I think they do well. This is what they've done previously. And time after time and time after again, coaches slam a system down and not even hope that the players fit it. It's just my way or the highway. That's just football culture. That's just how it is. It's always been a very militant sport, you know? So it's like, for me, I feel like guys like Jeremy Curley, Chris Ivory um, that they brought in in free agency, they, they just have to do what's asked of them and be dependable. And you can you know guarantee why they brought that. Them in, Dave? Do you know why they brought him in? Why? Because the Bills are going in a very young direction, but they want some leadership out there on the field, okay? They want people that are going to help out their young players develop, okay? So you get some older, mature people, you bring them in. Now, that's what Curly is there for. That's, I mean, Benjamin, he still hasn't been in the league that long. You know, he's still on the younger side, so they want – the veterans to help season their younger players. That's what it's there for. They want the leadership. They want that type of character in the locker room. Okay. They don't solely make all their decisions on X's and O's skill. You also have to fit the mold of the player. You could have more talent than half the roster, but if you don't fit their character mold, you're not going to be on the team. That's why they're on the team, because they fit the character mold, okay? Just because they fit the character mold doesn't mean they're any better of a player. It doesn't mean they're going to get any more touches. They're going to have a defined role, and they know their defined role, and they're going to make plays when given the opportunity, but the opportunities are just not going to be there in volume for Curly. All right, so okay? follow, follow, me, follow me, follow me, follow me. This is or my, my, my point that, goes... That, 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 to add to that, obviously, um, Chris Ivory is not going to have a volume amount. He might have, like, I don't know, five to eight touches a game. I, I, all right, all right. Pa- let me pause you because I think my point actually is in parallel thought with yours because I I love having the vets on a team like that. I, I do because, you know, it's like Terrell Owens learned from Jerry Rice. This is how we work. Jeremy Curley, I've been meaning to do a podcast just on Jeremy Curley saying he's the most important receiver on the team because you're going to see his work habits. This is how you run routes. This is how you stay in the league, by route running. That's what that dude does better than anybody else on the team. So it's like this is how we work. This is how you stay in the league. And Chris Ivory, I mentioned on 189, podcast 189, that I believe he's going to get a third of the workload, like, Shady McCoy, make no mistake, is a dude that needs to be on the field. But when you need a guy to be in there for pass protection, it, it, it could be Chris Ivory over McCoy, obviously. And, again, you just need the guy to do what's asked of him. The young kids are going to see that. They're going to be like, yeah, yeah, let's just do that. Just like Deion Dawkins took to Richie Incognito. Exactly the same. Dude, we're in, like, as, as, we're in lockstep, Mike, on that. I agree with you. So let's, let's focus now because we've been all over the place. But, like, Dude, drive it home, man. How can the Bills win this game? I'll give you a couple minutes for the floor, and 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 I, I'm really hopeful, man. It, we know where the chess pieces are at now. Now I'm thinking, okay, Peterman gets rid of the ball quick. Um, how are we going to mask it? I hope we see a lot of screens. We've been seeing a lot of screens in training camp, okay? Well, and the, the way they have the possibility for victory on Sunday, for one, like I said, and this is big for them because they are just not as productive without Jimmy Smith. He's going to be out four games. So that is a hole. They have to attack the weaknesses of the defense. They also have to be clever with the play calling. They're not going to be pedestrian. 
They're not going to be Dennis Smith. You're not going to sit here in the living room. You're not going to be like, before they even walk up to the field, you're not going to be like, this is what they're going to run. They're going to be, I can't even think of the word, um, sporadic with the play calling. You're not going to know. It's You're going to be guessing. And if you're guessing at what the offense is doing, you're going to get beat. It's a chess match, okay? And if you know what the other person's doing, it's a lot easier to stop them. So I think improved play calling alone is going to help them score more points this year. Their defensive backfield is also doing very well for Buffalo. I think defense is going to step up. They have a solid rotation. It's unfortunate because I don't think Kyle Williams is going to be able to play this week. But we still, I mean, Buffalo still is going to rotate their D line and they are among the top in the league at rotating defensive players. So we're going to stay fresh, healthy throughout the game. We're going to be more rested going into that fourth quarter. And we're going to use play calling. Shady McCoy is going to catch passes. He too um, is going to line up in the slot, um, take advantage of linebackers. Um, They're obviously going to try to run up the gut. Um, but if that doesn't work, they're not going to pound that home. If they can't run inside, they'll either run outside or they're going to do more screens, sweeps, things of that nature, get the ball out quick, um, move people around um, to compensate their lack of ability. Uh, but like I said, during preseason, they were trying to figure out where the pieces fit best. And Anytime you do that with your offensive line, it never looks good, especially if you put the piece in the wrong spot, you're going to get torched. Um, So I think after the preseason, they've decided where they want their pieces, and I think they're going to be ready to go. They're going to be more productive. Um, And Peterman, my guy, you know, now your guy, you just – Drink the Kool Aid. Yeah, I ain't drinking the Kool Aid, man. I'm just a fucking fan, and I'll support. Drink, yeah, drink the Kool Yo, man. At drink the end the of the day, dude, I, I, I'm busy I painting a basement floor, and doing not. drywall and shit, not. and and <laughs> I don't know anything. These guys get paid to make these decisions. I just hate that, like, when I'm on a fucking scaffold kicking around and my knees are hurting 10 years ago, and I'm like, huh, I don't think this guy should be on the fucking team. And then he apparently sucks. And a lot of us are like, yeah, dude, did you not watch the tape? <laughs> like. Well, all I'm saying is I think they have a legitimate shot because of the defense and their new offense coordinator and Peterman's knowledge of the system. He knows where to go to the ball. Um, I I could definitely see Charles Clay having a good role. Kroom, the other tight end, is also going to come in. He's very athletic. He's going to get out there. They got red zone threats. They got a lot of big bodies if they get in the red zone to be able to throw. If you notice – the, the mold that we have for um, tight ends, they're all big and athletic. And to go along with Calvin Benjamin, you're going to have LaShawn McCoy. I mean, there's a lot of options to get the ball in the red zone to get into the end zone. Um, and then, like I said, you have your role players. You're going to have roles. They're going to go down the field to Foster or Ray Ray McLeod. They're, they're going to try to open it up so they don't load up the box. And if they load up the box... Dude, I don't think even Foster's going to – I wonder if Foster's even going to be – do you think Foster's going to be active? Um, I'm not sure because, I mean, I don't like how the NFL doesn't just – you got 53, but you can only dress 46. Yeah, doesn't isn't that stupid? Sense. I don't get I that mean, shit. talking about player safety, I mean, you'd literally just by adding – what is that? Seven guys? Um, that's seven more players that are literally going to play. I mean, the, the players that don't suit up, would literally play they would find even if it's just a player to a game you know say two plays times seven that's 14 plays other players are not on the field for an additional play so um that doesn't make any sense but um you know they're they're gonna do things offensively can i ask you a question mike yes so the bills defense last year right per pro football reference 155 yards Rushing yards allowed by the defense against the Jaguars, okay? The Miami Dolphins had 93 rushing yards last game of the season. Game before that, the Patriots ran for 193 yards. Game before that, the Dolphins ran 100 yards on them. Game before that, the Colts ran 163 in the snow against them. The Patriots, the game before that, 191 yards 
Game before that, the Chiefs only 55. Game before that, the Chargers 146 yards. Game before that, the Saints ran 298 yards. All right, Dave, we what get I'm it, getting at, dude, the, is the like, deep, why, yeah, why? Yeah. I'm listen, listen, no, for real. Getting ran why over. Why are without Kyle Williams? How can we expect? Like, I'm expecting big, not big things, but like a guy I wanted to eventually touch on uh, for another podcast was Shaq Lawson. But it's like again. Am I wrong to take the boat of I got to see that this defense is going to be improved before it happens? Because I've touched on it with you before, the 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 Waffle defensive line coach, I guess like a good dude, he ended up, you know, he's from the Horn Island area, he ended up retiring, and I don't know if they they told him to retire, but he decided to retire as an older vet coach, you know. Um, so... That defensive line coach retired, and, and honestly, it goes under the radar how bad the defensive line was. You know what I mean? Well, like it's, it's not just the defensive line. Defensive linemen, a lot of times, aren't responsible for getting the tackles. They're responsible for being where they need to be so the linebackers can come up and fill. Jermaine Edmonds is a phenomenal athlete, and he's going to have a great rookie season for us. And he is going to be – one of the key contributors as to why the bills are not getting thrashed on the ground week in and week out, because he's going to make plays. And the thing is, you don't have to make that many plays to dr- dramatically reduce the amount of yards you give up in a game. If you come up and make a play on third down, or you come up on second and make it second and long. And if you sh- reduce the amount of times they get a first down, you're going to reduce the amount of yards that they're able to accumulate. It's the bottom line. So him making big plays throughout the year is going to make it so they just can't be thrashed because they're not going to be on the field as much. So, um, like I said, I'm very optimistic about this weekend because of the matchup. I mean, sometimes in the NFL, it's all about playing the team at the right time. And I feel like if there's a right time to play them, week one. I agree with you, Mike. Um, Okay, well. What do you think about what do you think about Joe Flacco with Lamar Jackson? Oh, Lamar Jackson ain't taking that role in. No, I, I know, I know, but when you have competition and you have the heat on you, I mean, how do you I, I'm I think Flacco, we're gonna see a good year out of Flacco. Um You don't you don't think that you you don't I'm just playing devil's advocate here. So you're pretty confident. Okay. So one thing I like about the Bills defense, okay, is last year they did win the turnover thing. And I don't think you can ever really predict that. Okay. But when the ball is tipped up in the air, there's a good chance that these players get it. It it, it happened in the preseason. Uh, game three against the Bengals, they finally got a turnover. When you're where you need to be on the field, good things will always happen. And that's what McDermott does. He he knows he doesn't have the best players in the NFL. He just tries to prepare all of his players to be where they need to be. Because if everyone does their role on the field, mm-hmm. good things happen. Tip balls. And if you're where you need to be and you're corralling to the ball and there's a tip, oh, it's a gift. Okay? Being where you need to be on the field is key. And he drives that home. I think they're going to be just fine. Um, I'm not saying they're going to get turnovers because you don't always get a turnover, but obviously I could see them getting one or two. And if they do at the right spot, that's a game changer. So uh, I'm excited, ready. Got the fantasy football season kicking off. NFL is beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. So I'll give you my conclusion. Um, I actually could see Peterman. uh, This might sound crazy throwing two touchdowns and either no picks or one pick um and LaShawn McCoy getting a touchdown or two if uh you know schematically you know I can't wait to see I I love when new believe it or not even though I hate coaching changes I love watching new coaches come into Buffalo because I learn a lot you know so I can't wait to see schematically what Brian Dable does at camp. It was like ridiculous. A lot of reports coming out there, creative, really creative. Even Eric Wood had a comment um, on, on Twitter saying how refreshing it was to see different, a lot of different variety 
out there. Of plays. What I'm going to tell you, here's my projection, and it's crazy because you stole my fucking quarterback and I was going to play him. I could literally see Nathan Peterman throwing for 300 yards and three touchdowns in this opening week. Okay? He could have a monster game. Dude, and I think he'd get 100 and yards of that right he, from screen plays, frankly. Like, literally a safe fucking play, just dude. getting the ball out of his hands. Yep. Screens, that's slants, a, That's all that. That's plays. all that, that. Here's the thing. Mike, let me pause you. Here's the deal, dude. It's like, I, I don't mind Peterman, and I've said this, so I'm going to defend myself before I go to this next point, that, like, to play like I don't I don't mind him playing that's not the thing it's just you invested this thing in Josh Allen that said it's like you know Tom Brady's really fucking good because he's had a lot of opportunities to be out there in live situations man like nothing beats a live situation you know I don't know how it was like for a football yeah, Dave, player because you, you like to tell me but the investment until you find the player hypothetically if Nathan Peterman lights it up this year guess who's not gonna ever play a Buffalo Bill down. And I'm down with it, dude. I told you that. I'm down with whoever gives the Bills the best shot to win. It's just I want you to support them. I don't care if you put out, like, Kirby, the fucking Kirby's Dreamland out there, dude, and that dude's all puffing around on the Bills at QB. I want you to support him with fucking weapons. I want to see an offensive line in front of him. If that's Peterman, cool. I like Peterman going into the draft. Oh, when I, they I will tell them. you right you know, now, like, the Bills' number one focal point next year is going to be that offensive line. It needed to be um, addressed sooner. That said, you know, it's slim pickings. I'll well, give Bean not, that. Not it's really, slim pickings. It, it's better to find your guy at quarterback than get the line, than vice versa, because if you get the line before you find the guy, you're going to have a quarterback that exceeds expectations and then you really still don't have the guy and then eventually you're going to lose the line because you're not no. going to be able to pay everybody. You know what I liked about Peterman, Mike, honestly, is in camp, and you're laughing probably. Like What I really liked is... Well, this Peterman sucks. We'll focus no. on five receptions. What I liked is when Josh Allen was out there, it was cool because it was reminiscent to me parallel of his college career which is okay everybody says he had no one to throw to well how's he do oh identical oh he has no offensive line how's he do identical stat line to his college and then peterman went out there and no matter what where he was he produced whether it's with the ones the twos the threes whatever the fuck it was that said in hindsight i wish i could have seen peterman starting the Bengals game and if we knew it would have played out like this but I really feel like the Bills tried to get it to Josh Allen, man. They really tried to prep it and get it to Josh Allen. But I, I said on Podcast 189, they just want to get a proper evaluation of where they're at. So um, defensively for the Bills, to wrap this up, dude, um, they they simply just got to stop the run, man. I'm looking for Shaq Lawson. It's year three. Um, but I think he's kind of got a bad rap a little bit. And I think Shaq Lawson could actually be solid. Uh, Trent Murphy, he's an unknown. I'm not, you know, I, 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 they signed him for big money. And again, there's a defensive line rotation. I'm familiar with that with Leslie Frazier. He's always done that for years. Um, so I don't know, man. It, it, it's it, hey, it's Dave, at the end of the day. I thank you again for your your Jeremy Curly confidence. In the hundred dollars. Hey, Dave. My my oh, only God, question. I hope he scores a touchdown, dude. I my really only hope he scores question a touchdown. going on this: At what point, like, are you going to go all the way to the end of the season, or you know, like, if it's clear after like four weeks, who's the guy? Are you going to be like, wait, wait and see, man, wait and see? Or are you going to are you going to acknowledge reality? Like, how long? I don't know, dude. Did you, you see Zay Jones off season? Yes or no? Zay Jones didn't have much of an offseason. Yeah, I just uh, know he's... right, right. Okay, so what did he do this offseason? <laughs> <It did. laughs> what did he do before even training camp started? Okay, not, he, he kind of had, what, he kinda had a breakdown. What have you done for me lately? And it's lately not what he's it's Sunday, not, it, it's, 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 I could have been caught for $45,000 dead cap, and I played my ass out of the roster, Jeremy fucking Curly. I'm the man. He earned the right. Okay. He earned the, the he chance. earned the right. And that's he all I got to say. The roster. Yeah, not to be a fucking superstar. He earned Jesus, the right. Dave. He earned the right. right. Well, I'm about to devour this waffle that I just made. So. Well, I'm going to call you back in five minutes to talk fantasy football, you prick. So, 
Uh, All right, call me back, and uh, hey, we're watching football here on Sunday. I got two TVs that are going to be up and running. Oh, so. man, that sucks that I have my favorite clam bake ever with the Master Donatos. So I will be watching it there because I lost my shit when they scheduled the fucking they scheduled the clam bake on opening day. I was like, are you serious? Are you right? serious? Delicious. But uh, it, lucky, for, lucky for me, it's an away game. Mm. All right, Dave. Well, you have a good day. All right. I'll be waiting for your call if we're going to do another podcast. If we will, so just hang up. Go away. Right. Hang up. I'm. Fucking I'm waiting for you, and then I'm gonna wrap this me. bitch up. Mute it. I'm eating a waffle. All right. Goodbye. All right. So that's yours truly, Mike Smith. Um. So, essentially, what I'm getting at here is, that's Mike Smith, Fantasy Smitty. I love hearing from Mike. He's great, right? So hopefully you enjoy the preview, the arguing. Tune in to podcast number 191. We're going to dive into fantasy football after he eats his waffle. And um, I'm your host, David Palermo. Follow us along at NumBillsFan on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Check Facebook Live. It's the easiest way for me right now to reach a broader audience over YouTube. And I will transfer some stuff to YouTube and possibly go live on YouTube as well. Um, But follow along on Facebook because I've been waking up in the mornings. I'm feeling pumped. And I want a podcast. So... It's easier for me and also get to do some other like paperwork work stuff at home. So if you can follow Mike Smith too at Fantasy Smitty on Twitter. Let's get him some followers. He's got some great thoughts. I've known Mike for a decade. He's a great dude. And, um, you know, don't forget, follow at Punch Drunk, PunchDrunkSports.com, brought to you by them as well. And as always, Tell your friends, tell your family if you like it, pass along. I'm going to interact. I'll get back to you as soon as possible on any of the social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, as I mentioned earlier. So just subscribe along. You got some funny stuff you want to throw my way. Think that there's a funny article. Um, I love this thing called reading lately. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. And uh, I, I feel like deadspin has been like right on. So I did a podcast with Adam Deacon about why your team sucks, what that's been said about the Bills. And uh, some of it I disagree with, some of it I do agree with. And uh, it's always great because they just pretty much take every team in the NFL and just shut on the bits and pieces. So as always, you know that's in the podcast feed. It'll be up there. Or go on numbillsfan.com, and it's a featured post. So it should be within, like, right on the front page. If you don't go to numbillsfan.com, I don't know what's wrong with you. But you can get all your Numbills fan needs, a.k.a. just one-stop shop for any content that's been created it's right there uh there's a player on on there as well if you don't use it already so stay tuned podcast 191 coming up right on the turn here so if you want any fantasy football stuff we're arguing between mike and i i'll reset the scene for draft and uh you know, Mike's going to be a regular with it so really looking forward to the season to three fantasy drafts and uh Mike is a gem with that. He he does some wild things, but he's a gem. So please stay tuned. Podcast 191 coming next.